on this episode of the People of Pearland podcast. Yeah, we could cut this up. What's your What's your favorite food in town? Ooh, good question. Um, uh, man, I'm 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 a super vanilla guy, so I'm probably the wrong person to ask. <laughs> um like simple i'm very simple uh, no no I, yeah, you know yeah. no no i was thinking yeah no i, I, knew uh, I was <laughs> trying to think a joke about vanilla ice cream oh, no. No. <laughs> stay tuned for more welcome everybody to this the next episode of the people of pearland podcast quickly becoming the most popular podcast in pearland in pearland yeah so popular that you tried to create a song this morning on GarageBand. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to create <laughs> a song, probably on GarageBand. Do you know what that is? Nope. Uh, <laughs> it's now an app on uh, on Apple phones. Like it's a native thing. You probably have it. If you have an Apple phone, you have it on there. Yep. Um, and it allows you to layer tracks. Oh, yeah. um, and it creates the silliest stuff. In fact, I wonder, don't play no, I'm going to pull it up now. Don't pull, pull it up. <laughs> I should have uh, never said it. I'm on sorry. this episode <laughs> of the podcast, we have with us Vance Wiley from Community Development. Um, I found it now. Hang on. Give me a second here. Uh, oh, I'm, I got the dubs step thing going. Give me one second here. Let me get back. Can we go to a commercial break now? Uh, sound library. Oh, let's go back to the tracks. Okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> cutting to a commercial break as we speak. Um, oh, I don't know how to do it now. I messed it up. Um. Oops. Um, yep. No, I can't. Dang it. We'll plug it in later. We'll so plug much it in later. Yeah, keep going back to it. I know. I know. Track, keyboard. Let's go to my tracks. People. Ah, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. We got it. We got it. We got it. Wait. Oh. Oh, no. Oh, don't, don't call the police. Oh, yeah. Don't SOS. <laughs> Wrong side. I'm messing this all oh up. Oh my gosh. No, I'm no, real no. sorry, y'all. That's perfect. We'll edit all this. This is part a great out. Hang on. start. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is this is how we start every podcast. Here we go. Come on. Ready? Ready. <laughs> what is that saying? <laughs> It's saying people Pearland podcast in different orders <laughs> over and over again. Okay, yeah. yeah. It's so terrifying. It's you awful. Know, it's certainly something. <laughs> I'm pretty excited about this. Oh, so work. Uh, oh, that's the first first draft. <laughs> Just another Tuesday over um, here. You yeah. know, I feel like we need an intro song because mm-hmm. the people of Pearland podcast is popular with the people of Pearland. <laughs> Excellent. So, anyways, who do we have here today? <laughs> well, that's to the why show. I'm sitting here. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah, I know it's popular because I'm here. That's right. No, no. Uh, you are uh, obviously a very fascinating individual. Um, as I said before, Vance Wiley, community development. Um, and in this podcast, we just like to get to know the people who make Pearland prosperous and perfect and palpable. Community of choice. Community of that, choice. Yeah. Community of choice. Look at you knowing the tagline. <laughs> Next that question. does, you know, the community, the, the tagline has no P's in it whatsoever. We worked so hard. We really missed to that get the alliteration. Yep. And uh, I'm glad it doesn't. <laughs> I know. Apparently. No, oh, oh, there it is. Prepare to love it. it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the Well, that's our EDC tagline, right? right. Prepare yep. to love it. Yep. And then HR has the prepare to make a difference. Uh, so we, we, we try to work with those as we can. But we are the community of choice. Sure. Uh, and Vance has a big part in, in making that a reality. So yep. why don't you uh, tell us a little bit. What, what do you do here? What's your, what's your role at the city of Pearland? Yeah. So um, actually what I tell my team members when I talk about what I do, I have, I think, one of the best jobs at the city. Um, very blessed to get to interact with our, our business community, our builder community. Uh, be it residential or commercial, and uh, and just help them on their journey. And so I um, always like to coach people that, you know, we're working with individuals that are trying to do something from building a pool to enjoy their space at home or trying to pursue a dream of opening their own bakery or whatever. And so, um, but all that to say, we I, I help facilitate the development process. So from zoning property, platting property, installing infrastructure, or building something vertical, you know, a building, uh, we get to help with all that. So, um, I mean, that's obviously a lot. Um, what, why do you think that's 
what do you think that matters? What, what, what's the benefit of that to the community? <laughs> Um, so once you get into communities of certain size, uh, you're going to look into uh, our expectations, right? And when I say our expectations, I mean our citizens. Sure. Um, what they say they want in yep. the shape of community, yep. where things go, what mm-hmm. kind of businesses. <laughs> yep. Yep. And um, and also like those businesses, proximity to other things. Hey, um, you know, Houston's notorious for not having zoning and you always hear that. And because of that, next to your home, I could build something maybe you don't want there. Something heavy commercial, sure. have something industrial-ish. Um, and that's where our zoning comes in. Um, and you know, building community of choice, it, it comes off those, um, off that labor and of years of work of people saying, this is what we would like. And Fairland did a really good job of planning itself, uh, when it comes to, um, to, um, like uses and Mm -hmm. and businesses and locations. Well, and I, I think it's a thing that, uh, we don't talk about enough, uh, but the intentional investment in the longevity, long term view, it takes to get to that point, right? right? To say, hey, here's where we are now as an organization, but you resident, what do you think 25 years should look like, <clears throat> yep. right? And then let's take that information and move thoughtfully in that direction. And that's sort of, I think, where you come in. Yep. Because there are, I'm sure, plenty of instances where um, a permit requester comes to you and says, I don't see why I have to do this mm-hmm. because they're not looking at the long-term impact yeah, right right the so I, a very specific example i had a local business owner um complain to me because um they were building a new building had to put up a uh, a uh, sound wall mm-hmm. uh, behind their business because they backed up to a residential area of course area the businesses on either side of them were built before that was the thing right yep. And so they had to build it to spec, but they didn't have to do it for the other businesses. And yep. they're like, this doesn't make sense. Yep. And I had to explain, well, eventually those other businesses right. will evolve and they will have to get And Ultimately, it will all move that direction. Just because they didn't doesn't mean you shouldn't have to right. if that's the direction we're going. Yeah. Right? And we run across that or we you know, come into contact with those types of conversations pretty often. Um, and so it's not grandfathered. It's existing nonconforming is the terminology to use. Oh, um, I didn't know that. Existing yeah. nonconforming. Yep. Right. And so I'm going to use I'm, that. You, no, it's not grandfathered because grandfathered would mean they can continue if they changed, right? But existing right. nonconforming means it was there before these rules. But if they did come in and wanted to do something new, they would need to meet our current rules. Right. And just like the sound buffering for residential, um, you know, it's just a, it's a, what we get to do is the balance between what the private sector would do on its own versus what our citizens want and we can regulate. And so when it comes to installing landscaping and creating places and whenever big neighborhoods come in, making them pay parkland dedication fees so we can create and maintain these great parks that Pearland has. Um, I mean, that's not done because the private sector says, here's this extra money. Right. And so. Um, and uh, like uh, the, the forestry, the urban forestry, does he yep. work for you, for your group? Or? Yeah. So our urban forestry is in community development. Yep. Uh, it's under Martin Griggs, our other mm-hmm. assistant director. And, um, yeah, so protecting our, um, our special certain species of trees, our hard, our hardwoods, hardwoods, softwoods, hardwood trees. Uh, yeah, yeah. Trees. So <laughs> things that make oxygen, there are specific right. species that once they get to a certain Native. size, they yeah. are protected. Yeah. Um, and just encouraging that preservation <clears throat> or whenever you do have to remove them, make sure you're planting back something sufficient. Right. Right. What a cool job to, I always see him walking around. I'm like that guy has a cool job. Yeah. That's a fun job. Yeah. yeah. Jerry What's and Brent, the, uh, the new development out there that we had to preserve the Massey tree. Ranch. Yeah. The Massey oak Ranch. trees going right down the middle. Massey, we, Oaks. Massey, Massey Oaks. Oaks. That's Massey right. Oaks. Yeah. Yep. Uh, that's cool to see. Yeah. No, and those are good guys. They're good guys. They do a good job. Yeah. So, uh, in I guess you you uh, run the gamut of residential development, mm. commercial development. Yep. It's basically just everything. Yeah. As the the plan yep. dictates in Pearland, huh? Yeah, and that's that is my favorite part of it. Is just um, I'm not a come in every day and do the same thing for eight hours. Sure. And I'm very fortunate to have a position where I don't have to do that. Every day is something new. And while the goal is always something similar, right, to get something built, to get your business opened, the personalities are different, the experience level is different, and then, you know, all the businesses are different. Yeah. And so um, getting to work with folks on their journey and um, uh, no matter where they are, from zoning it to building it, infrastructure. So what got you into this line of work? How did you, was this an intentional thing? Like you you graduated from high school and you're like, I'm going to get a degree in. Right. <laughs> permitting no i don't, I don't um, know what yeah, yeah, yeah. walks through that process so, no yeah. <laughs> yeah no um uh, you know if it wasn't I, so i got married real early married right out of high school um 
And if it wasn't for my wife, I wouldn't even gone to college. I would have just gone mm-hmm. to the plants like everybody else in my family. Sure. I'm not dogging it. Um, but Where are you shit. from? Baytown. Okay. The Dirty yeah. Bay. Hey. Uh, hey. <laughs> I, I love, love Baytown. Yep. So uh, they're getting hammered right now. Good luck, guys. <laughs> yeah. Yep. But um, there, we just had a tornado come through. So that's what he's talking about. Absolutely. When this is being recorded. Yeah. 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 So they, and they had, they had at least two that I know of. But um, no, I wouldn't even go out. So I got married and my wife, D1 athlete, Val- valedictorian, uh, married way down the league. It's my hype. <laughs> um. <laughs> I always tell people that it's lucky that I'm charming. Man. Otherwise, I wouldn't have gotten oh, the wife man. that I got. Yeah. And I have just plummeted with age. <laughs> but um, anyways, married right out of high school. We go to UTSA. She plays softball. And, um, and I just fail every class you can mm-hmm. imagine for an undergrad um and end up getting a real useful degree in communication uh as in what speak, as in speaking oh, oh okay not communications which is I was a, say it's a joke Come on, now. Yeah, right. um <laughs> <laughs> kidding uh, so i end up with a degree in communication and psychology come out of high, come out of college and it's like oh, i can't get a job with this so back we go to get a master's degree oh my and gosh. um i actually uh, kind of had my act together a little bit and got a master's degree in what i things i thought would be interesting to me which was ended up being public administration sure mm-hmm. So grew up with a um, grew up with a mom who was big in church and service like that, and then grew up with a dad who can just fix anything. Truly, is just like an amazing fella. Uh, don't tell him I said that, <laughs> but uh, really is just a cool guy. And uh, between those two things, I think is kind of how I ended up in the public sector. Hmm. Yeah. And so um, graduated my master's and got on with the community in East Texas, Longview. Shout out. Yep. And yep. Uh, did eight years there. Uh, really enjoyed the time and the experience, and was very fortunate to to find the opening here and. Uh, have a little bit every- closer to yes. where you're from. Yes. Yep. So about 30 minutes from family, which is a good buffer. On and the Gulf Coast, yep. back to fishing. Fishing. Yeah, absolutely. Right. Yep. Absolutely. My, this is where my friends are. And so, um, yeah, got to kind of come home. And we we had a kid whenever I moved down. Um, so yeah. How long have you been here now? You've been here uh, for? Two, two and a half years. Yeah, two and a half years. Yeah. Um, yep. Yeah, it, it's uh, so same. Well, both of us were from here. Uh, and uh, I moved to dallas for about 10 years joe lived austin. in san antonio and austin mm-hmm. or, or san, uh, san marcus san marcus yep. in austin mm-hmm. uh and um similar sort of deal wife from here too but um one of the things that i like about being down here is i'm so close to galveston mm-hmm. and yep. you know so close to saltwater fishing of course and, uh i mean there's so much wildlife you know stuff i can do yep. um yep. So close by. Yeah. Hop uh, on 45 or I 10. Go anywhere you want. Yeah, I know. Head west on I 10 and in the hill country in just a matter of hours. And, um, you know, we know how to deal with hurricanes. So that's all right. <laughs> that's no, right. and it, it's, it's, it feels cliche, but I mean, the mayor's got a pitch where he's talking about our location and our ability to save you like 30 minutes a day and commute. Yeah. And I mean, I was just one of the people he was talking to. Yeah. I worked here like six months and the city of Houston showed up with a pretty significant offer for me. And, um, it, you know, spoke with john and was able to stay here which was just a true blessing yeah. mm-hmm. so, so um not to get too personal but you also live in this area too yeah you yeah live? so about 12 minutes from uh, uh the city hall of annex yeah okay. yeah yeah. Yep. okay yeah we're uh same difference a little bit further down i live down edge of friendswood <clears throat> and uh i um i appreciate that i'm i can be yep. so local big time uh, i'm too that, close <laughs> yeah he, he's like practically walking yeah. yeah but it's nice the rich people oh no it is nice yeah so i came from a 50 minute one-way drive yep and i did it like i said for eight years um and pros and cons right yeah uh yeah. podcast listening to audiobooks stuff like oh yeah that. for sure but yeah. at the same time it's just like dang no. that's a lot yeah. of day lost yeah coming for from sure. austin where it took 40 minutes just to get right down the road i was like okay this is that that's it <laughs> i yeah. got it for sure yeah. um i am i i i am spoiled you know, I don't, I don't like freeways anymore. I just want to, like I, when I moved down here, I joked with my friends from back in Dallas that I was like, you know, a lifetime movie. Like I put on my little suit, and hop in my little truck, uh, look at you down now. 518 look at you now. The city hall, go to my council meetings. Oh, man. And now I'm, you know, like, uh, what I call myself, Diet Herb. You know, I, got the, I'm got, I like it. <laughs> That's full good. Western, you know, um, COVID years, man, they took a number on you. Yeah, they sure. did. They did. Uh, so from here, uh, work community development. Um, I, I, I can imagine in that line of work, um, you get griped at a lot. Like by, by permit owners and, you know, the, the people who are trying to get stuff done, they're frustrated or, you know, is that a common thing or is that a misinterpretation of? 
Um, so it's not it's not really common, um, especially mm-hmm. once you like once you build a culture of we're here to support you and you establish like the actual legitimacy of why we're here. Mm-hmm. And so like for homeowners, uh, um, like when I bought my first house, I wish we would have had an inspection crew that had any type of care to them at all because it there ended up being like multiple lawsuits for the builder. And it was, it was a big deve- um, Good development. Gracious. And there are certain things that, you know, a little bit of just this much of effort, a small amount of effort could go a long way mm, sure. when it comes to getting things done the right way. Um, and so once you establish like, man, no, we really are here to help. And you kind of explain what the purpose is. Um, usually there's no problem at all. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it's always a perception, a blown up perception about, it's going to take more time and it's, um, and you're going to be in the way. Yep, and yep. once you establish like, no, man, we're, we're here to be part and we're here to make sure it gets done right for you and them. Um, it's, it's really, has there good. been a, a cool success story, a cool business or something that's come to town that's kind of had some hurdles that y'all kind of helped them with or. Yeah. Um, so state of the city comes to mind, obviously. Oh um, yeah. Was fortunate uh, enough. Swim, uh, um, swim Academy. Swim that's academy. right. Yeah. Yep. So the swim Academy, uh, came through and, um, and, you know, it's whenever you're, what a lot of people don't realize is whenever they get into wanting to open their small business or do it on their own, like your relationships are so important from your design professionals to your contractors. Um, and then also with the city, of course, uh, because any one of those elements can really make things more difficult. Right. Um, and in that particular situation, um, the business owner and, you know, if she was here, she would tell you just flat out, you know, I was really struggling with my side of the ball. And I just she was just struggling to to get organized and with responses from contractors. Mm -hmm. And finally it ended up taking some participation on our end, um, which is a little outside of our normal, you know, normally I don't make a call like, Hey, you've got to call the owner back to the contractor. Right. But, um, got us all in a room and at a table and we, and we all worked through it. Uh, but that's a good one. And and there's a variety. I mean, uh, first cup coffee, you know, they just opened up and I mean, Mm -hmm. they were texting me almost nightly when it was getting ready for their time for their CEO. Um, and just a, a good group of folks that have never done it before. And, we're real excited. So, that's so one. really, that's the uh, to me when I think about like key differentiators, right? Because I can imagine that other communities have development services of, of some kind, but it seems like that's the real sweet spot. Mm-hmm. Like the yeah. the um, <clears throat> the businesses that are serial entrepreneurs that do this all the time, or yep. the large companies that have development teams, they yes. all know how to do it exactly. The the small local business right that right. has a dream that they want to fulfill right that they know their business they don't know how to go through the development process yep. right you all can step in and say here hey, where do I start? let's walk through this together. right yeah and that's yeah. um again like talking about just the <clears throat> pieces of my position that i really enjoy uh, i get to be a liaison for the chamber uh, mm-hmm. so shout out jim uh, and Lindsay. i'm in leadership fairland this year uh, oh yeah well let's talk about that in a minute. Jim yeah. Johnson <laughs> uh, yeah so Jim Johnson is in the chamber a great guy um, another really a business savvy person who is here to support businesses and just wants to have common sense conversations when we do run into issues or we run into misunderstandings like hey he wants to come and sit down and talk about it, like why are we here and what's the path forward and that's um, that energy in itself goes a long way with customer service right yeah, absolutely. of not just being a brick wall of like hey no I know we are hitting this and it's I understand why that's an obstacle but like let's talk about solutions yeah and so when you bring that energy it goes along solutions, right? yep. of course I mean, um, things that that are mutually beneficial for the yeah. business owner for the community yep. right and drive towards that long term goal so um but yeah supporting those <clears throat> supporting that small business and working with different partners um and then also just to at least touch base on it um obviously it's a big uh, city council initiative is just supporting small businesses, but we've recently, I mean, which is done through Jim at the chamber, the EDC uh, and Matt's yeah. crew. And economic are, development corporation. Yeah. We don't use acronyms here. Yeah. It's not a lot. Uh, <laughs> economic <laughs> development corporation. It's a hard one. Um, <laughs> but yeah. And then the hub, is that an oh, acronym? Yeah. Oh, I don't uh, think so. I don't it's think not. it is. <laughs> no, I think no, it's no. just <laughs> the innovation hub, but yeah. it's still very nebulous. Right. Yeah, itself. for sure. Yeah. And so, still very new. but Brandy's amazing. Worked with her a couple of times. Yeah. And cool. just, um, again, just a lot of resources right here locally. And yeah. we all talk and get along, which is a big piece of success. Yep. yep. <laughs> well, and I think that's the thing that, and that's part of a uh, talk track that we've heard before, you know, um, the, the, um, the diversity of Pearland, you know, as a place where people can work, you yep. know, and uh, where they don't have to commute, they can live here, they can get good high paying jobs here, they can yep. get good educations here, you right. know. Um, and 
and creating that that all encompassing experience, um, I think is a really special thing. Yeah. Um, and in part of the appeal, I think when we you know we hear the council talk about Pearland being the community of choice, right? That they they believe in that. They sure. they back that. <clears throat> and I think that the proof is in the investment in those types of things and in community development and yeah. in uh, partnerships and relationships with the Chamber of Commerce Absolutely. Uh, to connect all the dots between those things. Yep. Um, so talk to us a little bit about um, um, leadership Pearland. What is, what's that? Are you, yeah. Um, are you learning all the leader skills? You, yeah. You, <laughs> you, you're, you're, so I don't know if that's really, it's in, you're, intent. You're, <laughs> I'm trying to think of a ship pun there. That's oh, like, yeah. you know, you're boarding the ship of leaders. Hey, hey pretty good. In pretty good. Cue the music. <laughs> Cue the music. <laughs> that's yeah. it. This episode's over. <laughs> um, so people I don't know that it's... Podcast people. Oh, gosh. Um, yeah. So I don't know that it's really about uh, l- necessarily learning certain uh, leadership characteristics. There's certainly an element of it, but it's more about the networking piece of meeting other local leaders uh, sure. and building that connectivity of like, hey, if you ever come into a bind or you're wanting to build something or working on a development, um, from the city's perspective, they send representation uh, like, hey, here's Vance and he's kind of is a general generalist in this area. And so, um, you know, making those connections is always great. Uh, but no, the le- leadership program, they take you around. Uh, it's a, I want to say it's a nine month program. We'll just say it's a year by the time application, everything's said and done. You get matching shirts. You get matching shirts. They're rad. Um, and you'll, you'll tour a variety of different facilities once a, uh, once a month, go see some of the nonprofits, go see some of the educational resources we have locally, uh, make a trip to Austin, uh, for Pearland day. Oh yeah. Uh, you know, get to see a Thompson talk, um, and just see all the amazing things that this community has going on and the support that exists here, um, amongst its local leaders. Yeah. And so different industries, banking, education, uh, healthcare, I'm trying to think, uh, and then also individuals that are self-employed. Sure. Yeah. Awesome. Really, really good group. We've got some awesome personalities. And a, and a pretty small group. Each class is, yep. I mean, only a dozen or so people. So ours is the biggest. And I think we're 17 or 18. Yeah. And we're the biggest class to date. Yeah. And then obviously there's a part of leadership. Pearland is also you select a um, your class project. And okay. so we're actually in that phase right now. Um, Mo's in the group with us um, from Economic Development Corporation. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I think this I think tomorrow we're supposed to meet to vote on. And we're gonna paint a mural on the side. That is it. our. That is one of the ideas. Wait, what is was it? it? Really? I yeah. missed it. A mural. Uh, I said a, a mosaic. Mural. Oh, mosaic. I yeah. thought it was a mo joke. A mosaic. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't, but now that I wish it was. So, That's good. Um, but no. So Mo actually has an idea in for like a, <laughs> a mosaic. I can't get over that now. That's really good. No, Sorry, I really, Mo. That's why I paused. I was like, this is a crushing <laughs> joke right now. <laughs> I'm good. I'm not that good. So <laughs> I can't. Yep. Yeah, one of the ideas is a uh, is a mural. Oh, cool. And um, yeah, we'll be we, looking. We like murals. Dollars. We, we like things, selfishly within communications, we like things that are just naturally photogenic. You Good know? backdrops. So, yep. Great backdrops. We're yep. always looking for something that yep. like, ooh, right. we could shoot video in front of So that. the one in like Old Town, you know, that's kind of, I think mm-hmm. we, we use the, that all the time. So our direction, the, the ideal, in my understanding of the idea, would be to be something like that, that it's just community oriented. This is not about marketing or like, pushing a business it's just like no that's a cool spot in Pearland to go right. take a photo and then obviously there'd be like a plaque or something for the people who funded mm-hmm. it or yeah whatever. yeah that's um, awesome and just uh, so we'll be voting on that tomorrow uh, for either idea one or two and uh, where it goes it goes um, if you need any other ideas uh, I'm happy to provide feedback I think we're past the more idea <laughs> um, phase my suggestion you could do a mural on Pearland Parkway um, where in the street yeah we'll just like paint the whole street up. No, know? right in the circle. Yeah, just right, put right, it right in the, in the awesome. circle. Uh, That's what drivers need when they're in there. I, I like things that, you know, I'm all about engagement, you know, yeah. and things like that. Yep create engagement. We'll, we will be if it, if that's what's selected and that's what I'll be voting for. Um we will be needing to hustle up a location. So we'll be knocking on doors. Cool. You know, well, the train depot. I we just painted cool. it. Uh, although it's perfectly you white, the caboose. Caboose. you can paint, you can paint the, caboose. the caboose. Oh my that would be really, really I cool pitch actually. It tomorrow. So I'll put it in the hat at least. Yeah. Hey, the caboose could be an option. I, that could be really that cool. That could be really cool, man. We'd like for that. <laughs> <Yeah>. We'd like <laughs> to make the caboose something useful. Like, yeah, you know, um, I want coffee shop there personally. Um, I don't know how to, have enough close enough. to talk to a, 
I don't want to drive there. I don't really <laughs> he want just wants to, to walk. First cut, yeah. yeah. like next Paris place. <laughs> don't don't miss them all. Come on, you know how far that is when it's oh, raining. Man. Wow, I can walk over to the depot right there, You're and right. it'd be a night. Nice, people could sit there. We could put tables out. Come on, man. Could be cool. You're right. <laughs> Thank you. That's, that's all, all he wants I, to hear. Yeah, that's, that's all I want to hear. <laughs> okay, so talking about coffee, I'm, I'm curious <clears> as uh, being involved in community development. Speaking of coffee, yeah, we could cut this up. What's your What's your favorite food in town? Ooh, good question. Um, uh, man, I mean, I'm I'm a super vanilla guy, so I'm probably the wrong person to ask. Um, like simple, I'm very simple. Uh, no, no, I, did yeah, you not know that? no, no, no. I was thinking, yeah, no, I, I, knew uh, that. I, was, I was trying to think a joke about vanilla ice cream. So, uh, man, uh, I don't know. That's 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 tough. Magnolias is great, uh, uh, yeah. but at the same okay. time, I like boiling foe right here. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Apparently, there's a new. You probably know this because I bet you did the permitting. The yeah. the Stone Pho place and on the west end of the town. West end, yeah. Um, I'm excited to try that place. We'll see. I mean, I don't know if it's like a you know bad juju to not mention Killins. I mean, Killins is good. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, <laughs> it's barbecue. I think it's we. It's one of those things. Like it's local barbecue oh, yeah. that is <clears throat> well known. For Very what's popular. Um, oh my gosh, I'm blanking on it. The uh, this Cajun place off 35. It's on 35. It's not Floyd's. It's um. Is it not off 35? Oh man, I think it is. Anyways, it's great. I have a gator yeah, boy there. That's on the edge of town over there, uh, kind of by uh, the freeway. No, no, it's, no. it's in. <clears throat> um, man, I cannot think of. It's not Floyd's. I, I can. That's all I can see in my brain. I can't think of a Cajun place on 35. But yeah, I know. Um, I got nothing. Where? Where on 35? Yep. Um, <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> so you like Cajun food? Is what you're saying? I like seafood. Yeah. Okay. So we'll yeah. Take well, that, we'll take that twist. Course. There you yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, I know yeah. it's not fair. It's. I mean, yeah. They kind of they go hand in hand. <laughs> uh, seafood gumbo or chicken and sausage? Mm. Seafood gumbo. Yeah. Yeah. Oysters included? No. Really? Oh, he said no. Real fast. Man, you were missing out. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm sorry. Right. I, I say no too. Like I beat them as fresh as you can get them straight out of the water, but it's just not for me. You don't like oysters. Oof. Steamboat bills. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They have a gator. Uh, oh boy. Oh boy. Yeah. Fascinating. It's strong. Yeah. Lively I'm gonna have to try that. I, I've I've never. I'm gonna have to go good. do that. Yeah. Sounds I never amazing. think about going over I, there. I forget yeah. about it since it, it used to be. Um, mm, back uh, in the day. Yeah. yeah. What was it called? Um, it was called scooters. Scooters. That's right. Oh, really. Mm-hmm. Now we have scooters coffee. Yep. Um And uh, it was a place. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I. Anyways, Anyways. <laughs> moving on. Uh, so uh, you're a fisherman in your spare time. Uh, yeah, as time allows, for sure. Uh, what uh, saltwater specifically? Uh, yeah, so living in, living in East Texas, I we actually live right on the lake there in White House, Texas, uh, which is where Patrick Mahomes is from, and hmm. um, uh, tried bass fishing. Really do enjoy it. It's just not for me. Um, but yeah, saltwater for sure, and then. Uh, the older I've gotten, the more I've gotten into uh, flounder gigging. Mm. You see, you like that better than fishing, you think? Uh, yeah, and just because I go so, uh, go so rarely, it's just more chill, and I, we, you know, we can kind of hang out a little bit. We're out of the sun, yeah, and so yeah. Um, that's kind of the why right there. Yep. Yeah. But uh, but no, yeah, uh, catching um, speckled trout, reds, sure. So uh, inshore wade fishing, not yeah, offshore, yeah, inshore, yeah, yeah, yeah. sport fish stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, no, always inshore. Um, uh, hit some rigs every now and then but yeah um i uh we grew up with a pond at our house so i've you know perch catfish <laughs> yep. bass growing up uh salt water for me i don't know why it's just maybe because there's more to explore for sure you know there's more um shoreline and honey holes that you can see off in the yep. distance and stuff like that yeah. um, and variety to catch yeah um and, and i feel like Catching redfish is different, well, really than any other fish. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like you really gotta, uh, you gotta get out in front of them, and you gotta make sure they're hungry, and you yep. gotta get the right bait, and you gotta, you know, yeah. um, that's a sport that I, I, I find uh, very few places where I find as much joy as you know, shin deep in uh, warm Gulf water <laughs> exactly. in the middle of yeah. summer. Yep. Yeah, 
Uh, and I, I love throwing cast nets. You know, it's always mm. a dream of mine. There's gonna be a seahorse in there. It never mm. is. Mm. But really, oh my gosh, can you imagine throwing a cast net and reading a seahorse in that thing? That'd be pretty awesome. I, mean, I, I will tell you, uh, I've done a couple like in the surf <laughs> uh, where I've caught some shad that were like, yeah, crazy long, yeah. like six, seven inches long. I'm like, and yeah. I, I'm, it's a three foot cast net yeah. in the surf, right? And there just happened to be a fish right there yep. like it's unbelievable and yep. then i just caught hard heads off of it so it did me no good whatsoever <laughs> yep or when the gulf gulf shrimp come through always cool <laughs> yeah yep. so you cast them for them where do you catch them um i'm gonna say rollover it's not rollover ball over ball okay over. Yeah. yeah 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 um i uh like bolivar last time we were down there saw a shark scared me a touch mm-hmm. <laughs> uh it was closer than i thought it should have been mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, What'll run me off bottle and mosquitoes a lot of times. Yeah. yeah. Last time I went, uh, so have you been fishing with Eric Hammond? Uh, uh, a couple times. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I went with him last time was over the summer, I guess, went down to Galveston. Uh, and uh, we walked into a place and there was one little like, uh, like uh, cove over here that we weren't walking into to our left. And uh, there's totally an alligator sitting in there. Yeah. Uh, and he was like, you good? Didn't freak you out? I'm like, he's there. I'm going over here. <laughs> uh, and then my cousin told me later that the place that we walked in, my uncle got chased by an alligator oh, oh, wow. yeah. out of that cove. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, well. M- maybe not. Now I know. <laughs> there you go. I'll oh, keep yeah. my pole handy yep. so I can poke an alligator, yep, I guess. For sure. So, um, I mean, but it's part of it. Yeah. Part of the experience. Mm-hmm. Always, always. Uh, and honestly, I go out there. I'm not the best fisherman ever, Same. Uh, but uh, just a morning on the water is mm-hmm. time well spent for sure. Yep. Uh, so what else do you? What are your What are your other hobbies? You're You're married. I'm married. Uh, uh, we have a. Uh, so Oliver turns two in March. So we're, okay. however old that is, twenty one months old. So you're still tired. Still tired. He's a monster. Yep. Uh, yeah, like, super cool dude. Yeah. Real proud of him. Definitely the coolest things ever happened to me. Sure. Uh, a lot of work. Kids help shape perspective for sure. One hundred percent. And so married fifteen years and finally had a kid. Um, and he's just been the coolest thing. So been yeah. a so that when we moved down here, bought a house, remodeled the house myself. Um, and then had Oliver we remodeled as in like you yeah. did all the work and did all. Absolutely. So you got the handy gene from your dad. Yep. Yep. And just handy enough to get in trouble. So sure. thankfully, thankfully dad was there for every step of it yep. as well. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I do all the attic work and yeah, uh, cause it's hot up there. Yeah. <laughs> and he, and he tells me what I'm doing wrong and I go do the attic work. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so redid all that and, um, moved down here and got the job, got promoted assistant director. So it's been a whirlwind of a couple of years. Yeah. And COVID during all that too. So. Yeah, mm-hmm. and uh, EOC, I was COVID's planning chief. That's right, I forgot. So about I inherited that, that from uh, Carrie Capers. Yeah, that's that's a fun time. Yeah, that was fun. <laughs> that time, was a time. It's a way <laughs> straight from the frying pan. Yeah, yeah. it's a way to learn the EOC. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we I think learn the best in our activations. Oh, yeah, uh, absolutely. Sure. We we do we try to do as much training as possible, but um, training doesn't give you the the adrenaline rush mm-hmm. that you know, being in an actual, actual activation does. 100%. Um, and it's true. Every scenario is so different from each other, you yeah. know? So yeah, 100%. Um, and everyone, and we've talked to other municipalities about this, we've talked to Harris County about this, but you know, uh, even the, the most well-trained they learn to, yeah. right. Everyone has its quirks. Uh, and I think that's part of what keeps it interesting. Yep. Sure. Um, did you know emergency management would be part of your job when you came on board here? Or did uh, you- no. Yeah. Um, so just because of the different roles, you know, they, how they pitch it, you know, I don't know if it's true or not, Peter, but what they'll pitch <laughs> to you is, uh, you know, different roles have different personalities and they assume because of my coordination role that I could be a planning section chief sure? because that's a big coordinating paperwork role. Yeah. yeah. And so, um, you know, if you talk to Peter and Melanie, I'm sure they'd say they're wrong and I'm terrible at it, but, uh, I still oh, get the come call. On now. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> Hey, as long as you're still calling, that's, I call that a win. But no, fortunately, I mean, Carrie is amazing at, at, um, the IAP that's incident true. action plans. There you um, go. Hey, look at you. Yeah, all right. Catch Wait, up. EOC got by it. Emergency operations. Emergency center. Operation oh, center. Right. And so, um, yeah, fortunately had her for support. We need an acronym button. We need like <laughs> a yeah. 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 I'm going to add it to my, uh, to my garage. Just play, band just play your song every yeah. time. Yeah. <laughs> We're talk That'll stop them real quick. That's right. <laughs> Plenty of acronyms in that world. Yeah. <laughs> yes, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Uh, Wait, we were in that training together the summer, right? We yeah, were, yeah. Probably. Was that Oof. the Fort Bend one? 
Uh, no, no, that was the one that was here at the rec center. Uh, oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's right. That was intense. Yeah, that intense. Lego exercise almost drew. So is it camping <laughs> exercise? <laughs> A what? It was a camping exercise? No. No, no, it's just... Well, you said it was intense. <laughs> In. <laughs> Boom. Uh, uh, thanks for listening in, everybody. Uh, this is... <laughs> Got him. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't... I can't... That one... That gets stuck in my... I can't... You'll get there. Wait till your kid gets a little older and then you'll be like, oh, sorry. It's just... uh, Natural. Yeah. yeah, You cross that that little like old man rainbow bridge and like, (laughs) we're here now. (laughs) The white sneakers. Pull my socks up. Yeah. 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 Put on the new balance. Get the mower out. Yeah. Yeah, See? Telling you. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Kid number two. How's it going? It's... uh, Turn the tables on a minute. It's good. Yeah. It's good. Um, My wife and I say that uh, it's not as hard as going from no kid to one kid. I, th- I feel like that really? was a, a total shock, you know. Granted, we didn't know what we were doing, you know. Yeah, so yeah. I don't now think it's like anybody okay. ever actually does, right? Yeah, and you can read any book or whatever, yeah. but you're just yeah. yeah. So now it's like I know she's okay. Like we, you know, like we we're we're vibing, so it's good. Cool. Y'all have uh, two girls, two girls. Amazing. Yeah, yeah. So it's been a good time, man. Um, big sister is doing really good. She's she's loving it. Awesome. Loving hey, congratulations. it. Congratulations. So thank you. Yeah, it's a good like age separation. You know, like yeah, they're, for um, sure. Three. Three. Yeah, she's about to turn three in a month here or so. Yeah. So um she's she's great. It was Murph, go get the bottle and she'll go get the (laughs) you know, she's like our little helper there. So it's fun. Big enough that she can do things. Oh yeah. Yeah. So she's she's loving it. But they're small enough like they'll grow up together, you know. And is there anything like my kids will annoy the (laughs) snot out of each other all the time? I hope so. I hope so. (laughs) Your kids are funny to watch, man. (laughs) What are their spacing? Um, They're three years, three months apart. But they're obviously older than <clears throat> Joe's kids. They're uh, 11 and 8. Uh, and the 8-year-old is um, getting into MMA. Uh, and so he's getting to the point where uh, if big brother doesn't watch out, like little brother's going to put a hurt on him. <laughs> and uh, like the other day, you know, I walk in. Uh, and they were both. In the, this is probably put them in the same room. And there's like ice packs everywhere, and I'm like, "What are what are all the ice packs?" No, oh, um, I kicked Henry. <laughs> <laughs> why? Well, he kicked me first. Uh, well, okay, we're not getting to the thing oh, about the why the stuff is, you know. And uh, so there's a lot of like detective work because nobody, yeah. um, you know, Henry. I see him walking upstairs with a thing of bandages. I'm like, "What are you doing?" It was in, it was getting empty, so I just refilled it. <laughs> nope that doesn't happen i like it though that's yeah neat. that's smooth <laughs> yeah. yeah nice try <laughs> try again oh that's so, great um long short somebody was bleeding for sure it was, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was a band-aid situation oh man so but with girls you don't have you know no i, yeah. I don't think you have as much to worry about boys are just right. destructive i, oh, yeah. I we we didn't want boys. We were very lucky that we got two <laughs> girls uh, because if we said some somebody must have been listening to us because I don't think we could have handled that. That's oof, man. That's a lot. <laughs> yep. The kids teach you so much. For sure. Oh, yeah. For sure. But he, absolutely. Every day is a blessing, though. Yeah. Ton of work. Ton of work. Ton of work. So yeah. you got more plans, more kids in the works, more. I mean, you, this one you, wasn't planned, so I'm not going to say I got, <laughs> not gonna say I have more plans. <laughs> That's good. Um, That's good. No, no think, plans is good. I think we'll be one and done, honestly. Yeah. Um, I mean, he is, I mean, he's an amazing critter and. Uh, critter. So. <laughs> the East Texas coming out. <laughs> oh, oh, critter. Yeah. But, um, so uh, we're, you know. 30 minutes ish in this conversation we try to keep these we don't take up too much of your time but uh what uh we always like to wrap these up with the why you know we like people to to share with uh, especially employees with uh, the community you know the thing that motivates you especially as it is professionally right um uh, when we do this exercise with new hires we talk about their contribution to the city and the impact that it has. Uh, but what, what makes you get up every day? What, uh, you know, what makes you put on a city of Pearland logo shirt and put on down here in your, yeah. Um, I don't know what you drive. I, uh, Toyota camera. <laughs> okay. Oh, there you go. Um, <laughs> Toyota camera. Uh, really the, the, as my career has evolved from, you know, actually being like in the weeds of moving the plans around and working with plan reviewers into more of administration of building culture um, you know, the why I have written on my whiteboard is, um, Oh, you have it written on your whiteboard. Yeah. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. Um, I need a picture of that. Um, so for me, it's about like, 
I want I want to make an effort to change some of the stigmatisms about dealing with local government or mm-hmm. working with the government because there's so many of them, right? Um, but it's at the end of the day, we're people working with people, um, and I think done right local government and governing bodies. I mean, they serve a tremendous purpose and they help people who can't help themselves in certain times. Yeah. And um, whenever your citizens aren't in a room, we're the ones fighting for you. Right. And so, um, so my why is to, to kind of crack some of those stereotypes and break the mold on what it means to be a government mm-hmm. employee. Sure. Um, you know, it's fascinating that you say it like that um, because one of the, the comments that I've had, especially recently, um, and one of the things that, uh, we want to focus on is uh, humanizing the governmental organization. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> because one of the things that we see, and we know this, right, just from observation, but also um, the surveys that we do, mm-hmm. um, when you talk about like, especially federal level, um, you know, people don't trust government. Yep. Locals a little better, especially where we are, there's of more course. trust in local government right. than there is in the federal government, but it's still not the majority. Right. Yep. So majority of people don't trust government. Right. And the disconnect is behind the government are all of the professionals right. that create that organization. And so what you're essentially saying is I don't trust people. Right. Uh, the people who are this organization and, and that to the people that get up and commit themselves to this work every day is, you know, hurtful. <laughs> for sure. Right? Yeah, for sure. Um, and so we we want to change the shape of that yeah. and, and work right in the of same course. direction of, of it's a big reason why we're doing this right here. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. That is the sole purpose of this is to say, look, we're not, you know, a government. We're people who care about the Pearland community mm-hmm. uh, and, and are committing ourselves prof- professionally speaking to making this a place that you resident business owner want to choose. Yep. Absolutely. Why you want to, why you choose Pearland as, you know, your community. Yeah. Um, and so um, I'm glad to hear you say that. That was, yeah, absolutely. that was the right answer. No, I appreciate it. <laughs> there was no wrong answer, but that was the right that answer. Was, yeah. yeah. No, and it, it really is. It, it's, and it's certainly something that's evolved over my years uh, in this industry. But um, you know, once you kind of zoom out enough, it's that, that's the backlining why is it's like, no, we're, yeah. we're in this together. Yeah. yeah. It's a good, good tagline. Is there uh, anything else that our, Tens of listeners need to know about Vance Wiley. No, no I'm, I'm just kidding. It's, <laughs> uh, let's say if you need something, holler. Yeah, yep. <laughs> city Hall Annex. Where is that located? Next to City Hall. Where is City Hall located? Liberty. <laughs> don't make him you do the ad. Three five one nine Liberty. Thirty five nineteen Liberty. I think I'm three five two three. Uh, I think that's right. You stumped me there. <laughs> there you go. Because I don't know the, the boom. You got him. I did pick the uh, roof color for the annex building. I hope you like it. He always flexes that. I'm like, eh, nobody. <laughs> it's an important thing. We got to do the little things really well. What were the other right? options? Not, not brown. <laughs> yeah, I don't I mean. Know. I think it was like, I think there was, there were actually, because it's a coated <laughs> material. Yeah. So I, I think there were like, we could, oh, we could have gone with the maroon uh, that we used to have, mm-hmm. which I'm trying to migrate away from. Same. Um, cool. And there was a, could have been black or it could have been, I think, I don't think galvanized was or like a, just a clear coat was an option. Um, but I thought the brown looked smart. Good job, Josh. You did it. Good job. Sophisticated. So next time you look out there, just be like, Josh, Josh did that. Great. You picked the color. I also picked the logo on the water tower. So I hope you like that one. Too. Uh, I do like that one, actually. Thank you. And it's, you're the second person that said that. I'm, um, I'm surprised. I, and pros and cons of like the school being built right here, right? Like you can actually see it better now. Right. But at the same time, now you can see the water tower better. But you can see the, 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 but the logo looks awesome. Yeah. Well, and you'll still be able to, once they build the school, I think you'll still be able to see the water tower. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, I didn't, you know, know the school was going to be there. That's right. Time. Neither did we. So. <laughs> We'll take that part out. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about schools. I'm just kidding. Let's <laughs> uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us on another fantastic episode. And we will um, see. Hang on. We'll see you next time. It's so dumb. <laughs> <laughs>